thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon and warm welcome to all of you joining us today. Uh, I'm Mohammad Rabi Khazada, program officer with Atmosphere Program uh, and moderator of this program today. Our session today is on reduction of emission from informal sector, the bricklands in South Asia. At the end of this session, we are expecting to have an overview of uh, the progress, challenges, and way forward uh, for this sector, especially in India, Nepal. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and thank you. It's okay. In Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, and Nepal. So for this purpose, today we have representatives from our government organizations, uh, from development partners joining us online, uh, and also from industrialists, from Brooklyn associations from four countries. To kick off this program, I would like to request uh, Dr. Arun Sharista for opening remark. Arunji, please. Uh, thank you, Ravi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's me again. If you have been attending the sessions here, uh, I have been speaking quite a lot today. Um, but uh, definitely with a great pleasure, of course. Uh, um, now, this uh, side event on reducing emissions from brick cleans uh, is to me also a bit closer, uh, close to me because I have been also trained as a, um, you know, in atmospheric science and air pollution. So I understand uh, the importance of this sector. Brick manufacturing process uh, in general in our part of the world, Hindu Kush Himalaya, uh, Nepal included, is an important source of air pollution in, in the region. Now, the number I'm going to quote here might not be very accurate, but it seems like around uh, 10 to 20 percent, uh, in average around 15 percent of uh, uh, PM 2.5 uh, contributions in the air uh, is by brick sector. Um, I, I remain to be corrected if I if I am wrong. Uh, but then the reality is it is very important uh, uh, sector in terms of uh, air pollution uh, and therefore it seems like an obvious kind of uh, sector where interventions for mitigation has to happen but uh, um, of course it is not as simple uh, we all know um, brick industry um, is a traditional in 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 and largely informal uh, sector as well, uh, and we know in this kind of circumstances, uh, changes happen very slowly. Technological uh, changes can happen very slowly, and then there are also some resistance to change. Right? Uh, the technologies are there to improve uh, emissions, the efficiency of uh, brick uh, industry. For example, zigzag technology, which considerably improves the combustion of fuel and as a result, uh, you know, its consumption and less emission is obvious. But then, you know, again, implementations have different challenges. Now, in 2015, we had a major earthquake in Nepal. Uh, and uh, sometimes this these sort of uh, catastrophes disasters also comes with some some blessings i would say uh, right um, so at least in the brick sector because uh, majority of brick industries were damaged it had to be uh, you know re uh, constructed and then a few you know uh, brick entrepreneurs uh, actually took up uh, this um, measure to build in zigzag fashion, right? So that actually was an opportunity and actually it has been, you know, accumulating after that. Uh, that was the story of Nepal, but then the success in Nepal had influence in other countries in the region as well. 
in Pakistan, I guess, uh, also um, had some influence. So, what I have been informed that today, 50% of bricklings in Nepal have been con converted uh, to Jagjag technology. Whereas in Pakistan, uh, I think 7,000 um, brick industries have been converted. So, these are uh, definitely um, numbers which tells us that we are we are uh, progressing, we are having some level of uh, uh, success, but uh, there are also opportunities. There are further opportunities, I think, uh, in, in this sector. Um, so, for all this, we have been privileged to be partnering with uh, the Climate and Clean Air Coalition, Coalition from the very beginning, which we have been partnering with them. But of course, uh, it would not have been possible without very good support from uh, the BRIC entrepreneurs. Some of them we are very happy to have with us here in Sharm el Sheikh in, in this Cryosphere Pavilion and also from uh, government. So, uh, definitely it's a matter of privilege to have eminent speakers here with us today from uh, government sector as well as from the industry. Uh, and what we hope to do today is to learn um, from the government representatives, uh, what are the progresses uh, made or being made in terms of policy? Because we know for scaling, policy is very important, right? Replication can happen autonomously, but then uh, policy measure is very important for uh, mass, uh, you know, scaling. Um, and then from industry, uh, from the entrepreneurs. Also, we'd like to uh, see what are the progress being made, what do you feel about it, but also to learn about the challenges because, you know, uh, understanding the challenge is very important if you want to take it forward in, in scale. So, these are some of the basic, uh, you know, expectation or uh, what we expect to do um, uh, in, this, in this session now, starting. And I'm very, very much confident that we will move out of this session with a lot of good information which will help us progress further in improving the brick sector and making it clean um, and efficient, reduce the emission uh, and also very much socially accepted. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Arun for the opening remark. Now, I would like to request uh, Ms. Bidya Banmali Paradan, who couldn't join with us today in person here. Uh, she is uh, in virtual platform with us. Uh, I would like to request her for her presentation. She will give us an overview of the BRIC sector across HKH, especially from ECMOD perspective, what we have done so far. Uh, Bidya Ji, if you are there, you can come in, please. Respected government officials, Britain entrepreneurs, uh, delegates, and uh, those who are present in the Chrysler Pavilion, my warm greetings from Isimod. So I'll be giving a little bit of pictorial overview for you all so that you can better understand this sector because most of uh, you must not have even visited the Britlands. So now we are, EC Modi is here in COP with the two main messages, to bring mountain agenda towards the center of global climate and environment discourse. And the second is investing in mountain specific climate priorities that will help limit global warming to one point five degrees. And the same message is very much relevant to the brick sector, as this is one of the neglected sector from both policy and enterprise lens. And also transforming this sector will contribute significantly to achieve 
net zero emission, which is one of the targets of COP. And uh, if you see the picture from the satellite, especially in this uh, season, towards the winter season, most of the HKH region is covered with haze. And this haze not only stays in the plain areas, in the indo region, but it also penetrates into the deep mountain valleys. And this is the time when approximately we have 150,000 bricklins in th South Asia, they operate. And for the benefit of those who doesn't know about the sector, usually in South Asia, the bricklins operate from November to April and they are in the seasonal business. So they close down in the monsoon time and they operate in the winter season. And uh, regarding the emissions, you know, this brick sector is blamed for emissions and also the social issues. And if you talk about the emissions, it emits around 120 teragram CO2, 2.5 teragram of CO, 0.19 teragram of PM2.5 and 0.12 teragram of black carbon. So, and about the people, like, you know, there are more than 20, 20 million people who work in the brick industry. And usually, uh, you know, the working conditions are very poor in this brick sector. So these are the major issues. So what have ECMO done so far? And this wouldn't have possible without the uh, support from the partners, like, you know, uh, uh, Arunji has already mentioned the uh, support that CCAC has provided. And additionally, uh, UK Aid had leveraged the fund to do further intervention in this sector. So we are very thankful and not to forget uh, the brick entrepreneurs and government who has been together in this journey. And EC mode has worked in mostly on capacity building, on social issues, on policy support, and also on South-South cooperation. So I'll just give a brief overview on this. We have, because, you know, we were promoting this zigzag technology, which is energy efficient and also environment friendly, less polluting. So the first thing was to build capacity. And now we have built capacity, we have done in all the regions, Nepal, Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan, and we have trained more than 3,000 Brooklyn entrepreneurs and workers to update this exact technology. The second is like, you know, once we were trained and the zigzag was converted, we started to show this evidence-based science to, and started measuring the claims. And here we are able to show that, you know, 14% of uh, CO2 and 40% uh, of PM and around 60% of black carbon was reduced. And this has been come out in the peer review journal as well. And totally like, you know, so far, like Arunji had already um, said the numbers like 7,000 bricklins, I mean, 50% in uh, Pakistan and 50% of Nepal, the bricklins are already converted. And through that, we are able to reduce around 4% of CO2 and 12% of PM and 17% of BC emission from this brick sector. Not only that, and we are also looking towards cleaner intervention, additional to the zigzag methodology, like using initial gas firing using LPG gas. Bricks, uh, clean used to use like, you know, a firewood to initially ignite the brick cleans. And they used to use 15 to 20 tons of firewood uh, to ignite uh, brick cleans. Now this is like 100% substituted by LPG gas. And this has been cleaner because LPG is far, far more cleaner than the uh, firewood. And it has also shown cost effective, like they were able to save 60% of the cost. And it's so convenient for the owners. They were able to like ignite coal 
very efficiently within two to four hours. So this has been well taken and on emission redu reduction also considerably. Secondly, like, you know, with the price hike in coal, like pellet could be a alternative options. And not only that, you know, pellet has proved to be a quite a good option for baking bricks. And this has, you know, other mitigating uh, advantage, like, you know, uh, we have a huge problem in the intergangletic pain on crop burning. So these could be used as pellets. And I think Madam is there from Punjab State Council for Science and Technology. And, um, you know, they have done quite a good intervention on uh, this, uh, uh, reducing this uh, crop burning from making of this, manufacturing this pellet and using in various industries. So uh, we have done a, uh, uh, pilot and it showed like you know 30 percent of pellet uh, there were a, a reduction of around 16 percent of co2 already so these are the intervention that we have worked and on the social side like you know bricklin is uh, always blamed for poor working condition of um, uh, of workers and you must have heard about the bonded labor especially in the bricklins and these are some of the issues that uh, really revolves around when we talk about the bricklings. And here we have uh, worked with, uh, at least like with uh, Nepal uh, Bricklin Associations. And uh, we worked on four pillars, like, you know, uh, on the social issues, effective end of child labor. The other thing is on the transparent employment condition basic services and facilities in the workplace because you know if you visit the bricklins they don't even have toilets and also safe workplace for the women because here around 50 percent of women are in the brick sector and i'm happy to uh, say that nepal has already adopted this social code of Con um, conduct uh, the brick association of nepal and um, uh, we are on the way of taking this to Pakistan and then to India. ECMOD being a regional organization, and we have been always uh, promoting this regional network. And ECMOD has facilitated the formation of Federation of Asian Brooklyn Association. And I'm happy that at least three members of this um, um, uh, federation of uh, FAPCA members are there and one is joining uh, virtually as he couldn't make up uh, to Sharman say. And this is the network of brick entrepreneurs which promotes an exchange of knowledge, technologies, good practice, lessons learned. And they have a very vibrant platform in WhatsApp where they can share and learn all these technologies and also they discuss among each other so this has been really vibrant and now uh, we are also in the last uh, uh, meeting that we had in hanoi we developed a roadmap for this uh, fabca not only that like you know brick used to be a quite a neglected sector and i'm happy to let you know that uh, i think like it's no more a neglected sector and we have a lot of high level policy uh, level traction in this sector like you know the visits by ministers and high level delegation and even you know brick, brick especially those exact issues was discussed in the parliament of india and pakistan so we are able to and uh, this COP is also one of the uh, good platform where we can showcase the uh, advan advancement in this sector. And in COP26 also in the Pakistan Pavilion, we had a short presentation on the um, um, BRICS that uh, the work that we had done in Pakistan because it was amazing work. They were converted like in Punjab, Pakistan, almost 100% within, you know, two, three years. So this was really remarkable um, uh, gesture from the Pakistan with the collaboration of uh, Brooklyn Association our, and also with government. And uh, without, you know, the support of Climate and Clean Air Coalition, where we have 
Martina and Katina joining virtually. Without your support, we couldn't have been entering this sector and also, you know, UK aid, which has leveraged support uh, in this sector. And with this, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Hello? Hello? Thank you very much, uh, uh, ji for your presentation and running us through a comprehensive presentation and valuable uh, information and actions that we have done in EC mode till now, not only in, in, in terms of technical, but also social issues as, as well as the our activities around regional collaboration. So now I'd like to request uh, Ms. Martina Otto, head of CCC Secretariat for her remarks. The, the very sad impact of the earthquake in Nepal. I do very well recall um, we had just had our working group meeting there, so we were all very personally touched as well because we had seen things with our own eyes. And we did say we have to find a way to, to get a little bit of silver lining to what has happened. And it, it was described how this has helped with the transition. And obviously, um, hopefully it doesn't take always such a, such a terrible event uh, to to help us move move and and make a transition and um, and and Vidya just talked about uh, the importance of collaboration uh, and and sharing experience and this is sort of the bread and butter in what we're doing and I want to to alert you to a group of potential friends that are in a different pavilion it's the buildings pavilion um, and you may want to actually go over there and and see whether there are some allies to to drive the issue they come from it as building materials from a slightly different sort of angle, coming firsthand with energy efficiency of buildings, but they come to this topic as well. So there's maybe many more people to connect to. Um, but now to, to my remarks. Uh, and, and obviously you heard already how important uh, the sector is uh, from a social perspective, from an economic perspective. And obviously as, as well, we alluded to the environmental aspect. The, the, the negative consequences that we've seen. And obviously, urbanization is, is uh, and economic growth are driving more um, building, building growth uh, with the demand for floor space. So that means also more demand for, for, for bricks. And uh, at the same time, we do see as results of uh, this urbanization economic growth as well, already um, stark air pollution and transboundary air pollution impacts in, in the region in particular. And uh, that means it's really urgent to act on, on the topic. So bricks are a key building material. The South Asia region produces approximately 310 billion bricks per year, representing nearly a quarter of total global brick production. So that's quite a, quite, quite a number. Um, when burning low-grade coal, we heard that already. It's a sector that, uh, that really contributes to air pollution um, at the at the same time, the region is is already very uh, affected in terms of citizens breathing air that really exceeds WHO air quality guidelines, making this a a, a real topic. We talked about sort of this that the number uh, we're looking at about twenty percent of total um, worldwide black carbon emissions um, coming from brick kilns. Uh, resources, uh, black carbon, along with obviously the iron and steel production as well. Now, the impact of black carbon uh, on health is pretty known. Uh, the relation to a uh, particular matter, 2.5 um, uh, pollution has been, has been made, but it's also a climate forcer. Black carbon is 400, between 460 and 1.5 uh, thousand times more toxic for our climate than CO2 emissions. And it is an important cause for global warming. And if you look at the price for regions, also the melting of glaciers. And there's a third component um, that we need to look at, and that's the black carbon's short atmospheric lifetime. And that is actually part of a good news story because 
because of this shorter atmospheric lifetime and the strong warming potential, that means if we take action now, we can actually help reduce some of the climate impact in the near term. And that's the essence, the bread and butter of the Climate and Clean Air Coalition. That's the UNEP convened initiative, a global partnership that brings together 77 countries and 78 non-state partners committed to catalyzing action on what we call short-lived climate pollutants. And uh, since 2013, really, uh, CCAC has been the only effort that addressed internationally um, emissions from the brick sector. And so uh, we were really focusing on addressing some of the barriers. And we're really glad to see that it's really above the radar now and obviously working very closely with all the partners working working regionally so, so hard. And we have provided detailed environmental, economic and technical analysis of the brick sector and its characteristics. We've developed inventories of brick kiln locations, production technologies, and fuel types across targeted countries. So it's a lot of the scaffolding work. We've made black carbon field measurements to monitor the emissions. So we always say, if you don't um, know how big it is, you can't fix it. So we, we did the measurements as well. We conducted technical training to brick producers uh, in Latin America and in Asia on best practices. So really addressing the issues around the workforce. And then we also spurred policy actions leading to the inclusion of the brick sector in the NDCs, but also looking at regulatory uh, reform and so on. And key to all of this is improved knowledge and, and awareness. And if I just look at, for example, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Nepal, um, and India, the countries have already been mentioned, the CCA's work um, in South Asia has contributed to the ongoing transition to much more efficient and less polluting zigzag kiln technology. And it's really good to see that the different technologies, looking at the different fuels that can be used, but also looking at um, diversification um, in the material with the hollow bricks, for example. And um, what we have seen is that this conversion to zigzag kilns has had a triple bottom line of benefits. Um, with a reduction in fuel consumption, and that means it's more cost effective, uh, with a reduction in air pollution, and with improvements in brick quality. And that should actually really be a compelling enough argument to go down that route. So it's recognized that the uh, engaging the informal sector, and that's really present in, in the sector, is both essential and not an easy task. When we talk about these win-win solutions, we must keep an eye on the social aspects and we must ensure that we bring all the actors along this transition process. It also means talking about creating opportunities, new opportunities with training and so on, but also the safety nets, the social safety nets that are needed. And I, I, I really want to stop here, but I would like to acknowledge the support of ECMOD, the good cooperation that we had with ECMOD, with the BRIC associations in South Asia and other key actors that have been instrumental in delivering the work that I uh, just highlighted and I really wish you a very successful event and I hope this this collaborative effort will strengthen knowledge of the technical innovation that we will hear throughout the session um, but also looking at the policy frameworks that enable this transition to more efficient brick production and with that thank you very much. Hello yeah uh, thank you very much, uh, Martina, Head of CC Secretariat, for your valuable remarks. Uh, we have a uh, recorded video from Dr. Pema Gamso, uh, our Director General at ECMOD. So I would like to request my colleagues to screen that. Yeah. That come out of a brick plane in... The emissions that come out of a brick plane in one country doesn't stop at its borders. The impacts transcend national boundaries, the impacts on the environment, on the health of the people, the economy, and even food production, you know, water quality are felt by communities both in and around the region. Therefore, we took up this work and we have introduced now a technology called ZigZag. Uh, which reduces the emission of dust particles by up to 40%, the black carbon emissions by up to 60%,
and carbon dioxide by up to 14%. Now, these are substantial reductions. And this technology, I'm happy to uh, say, is now being adopted throughout Nepal and also in Pakistan. In the coming years, we are planning to scale it out to India and Bangladesh. And we feel that this would make a very, very significant contribution to improving the quality of air in the region. The emissions that come out of a brick plane in one country doesn't stop at its borders. The impacts transcend national boundaries, the impacts on the environment, on the health of the people, the economy, and even food production, you know, water quality are felt by communities both in and around the region. Therefore, we took up this work and we have introduced now a technology called ZigZag, which reduces the emission of dust particles by up to 40%. The black carbon emissions by up to 60% and carbon dioxide by up to 14%. Now, these are substantial reductions. And this technology, I'm happy to uh, say, is now being adopted throughout Nepal and also in Pakistan. In the coming years, we are planning to scale it out to India and Bangladesh. And we feel that this would make a very, very significant contribution to improving the quality of air in the region. The emissions that come out of a brick plane in one country doesn't stop at its borders. The impacts transcend national boundaries, the impacts on the environment, on the health of the people, the economy, and even food production, you know, water quality are fed. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Pema Gamso for outlining the importance of interventions in this sector. Uh, so we have uh, Mr. Kiwal Bandari, Secretary National Planning Commission, Nepal. I would like to request him for his valuable remark. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, a representative from HKS countries, representative from Brick Industries, Ishimur colleague, delegates participating from virtual world, including DG Ishimur, Mr. Pema, ladies and gentlemen, media representatives. I am pleased to participate in this important event on mitigating black carbon and other pollutants from brick pollution production sector. First of all, I would like to thank you to the organizers, especially in the Chrysler Pavilion, ISI mode, and other concerned agencies who are able to make these things happen in discussion today. I want to focus on this. Uh, I want to ask what is the basic and fundamental need for a human surviving? Food, water, air. Without food, how long we can survive? Some days, some months. Without water, how long we can survive? Couple of days. And without clean air, where is our life without clean air? Just imagine. And the presentation made here by Vidyaji shows the ground reality of emission in our region. Despite the availability of clean technology, the, major, the majority of bricks used 
each year in our region are produced in polluting cleans. The excessive energy requirement and the release of large amounts of particulate matter, black carbon, sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, and other pollutants are major concern. The government of Nepal has endorsed long-term strategy, LTS, for net zero emissions, as many other countries in our regions are same commitment here. We aim to reach net zero emission by 2045 with some of the transformational actions to reduce CHG from major sectors such as brick kilns. We have proposed the replacement of traditional brick kilns, FCBKT, BTK, with modern improved brick kilns, zigzag. It's discussed with several presentations and my earlier speaker. And electronic tunnel kilns. This technology is successful in many countries, including our SKS member, especially in Pakistan. Nepal faces, Nepal still faces several challenges in its implementation. There are many reasons for this. The major reason is our fragmented cluster of production. Production uh, uh, scenario is very fragmented. An individual economy of scale is uh, pretty small and highly scattered. So it's very hard to implement this technology to each and every industrialist. We need to introduce this by any means. It is a priority issue, but we are unable to invest to improve this sector. Probably, we need more focus on conditional financing from both domestic and global. This is one of the important and urgent climate finance agenda where I personally feel the missing links, where I personally feel, still feel the missing links. My, from government and ECMOD will work hard. My colleagues from government and ECMOD will work hard in this sector. My uh, earlier speaker, colleagues from uh, ECMOD uh, mentioned that the policy is a major issue for implementation. I want to focus on policy. I think I am here as a policy making institution, representing policy making institution. Policy demand and policy, uh, policy demand and agenda setting is primary things. Policy drafting and policy decision is the key. Policy backup with fiscal notes is very basic, basic. And then effective policy implementation is must. And our each and every policy must protect our human life, must protect human face in our life. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some technical issues which my colleagues from government of Nepal, uh, Mr. Joshi, will communicate here in the, in, in, in the forum. Beside this, the big sector of Nepal seems to be comparatively small, as I mentioned you earlier, other than SKH countries. It is, but still, it is playing important role to mitigate regional air pollution and climate change issues. The innovation for the technology upgradation on the cleaner brick making process generated in Nepal is being outscaled by other regional countries. We are happy to further collaboration in the regional and international cooperation in modernizing brick clean. And finally, how we trained, educated, and modern people of our region have capacity to use advanced technology and able to make our life and living better, not only for the present day, but for our youth, for children, and future. Thank you once again for engaging us in this important topic. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Bandariji. Uh, now to dive deeper and see it from a different lens, uh, we have an uh, industrialist here, representative of uh, Breaklin associations from three countries, from India, Nepal, and Pakistan. Uh, their remarks will, will cover the challenges opportunities and what they have been through like this that is now in the brick sector that they have in their country so i would like to request uh 
Mr. Mahendra to for his remarks. Mahendra ji. I would like to first thank Mr. Mohammad Ravi for giving me the opportunity from Ishimor to displace, to put something of our Brooklyn in Nepal and relation with our countries. Mainly, I would like to say Namaste and good afternoon. Firstly, to the Ishimod colleagues and the organizers, and then to our government officials and our related PAPCA government officials and our other observators and our colleagues. I would like to say. Brooklyn in Nepal, what is the status on our view and what to do, what are the challenges for us, for us, we brick entrepreneurs. Now we are in very good process on our Brooklyn transition. From each traditional type of two cleaner technologies such as zigzag type. So far, we have converted more than 50% of our traditional brick cleans to zigzag type, and many more are on the way to conversion. We will have most of our cleans as cleaner cleans in the immediate future. Our new, our few and new entrepreneurs are already on the way to moving to a more modernized like tunnel clean and mechanized with socially, socially responsible type. The invention and support from the government of Nepal mostly on standardization and labor issue are also appreciated. And for all these activities, we want to thanks and Credit goes to Ishimor, CCAC, like UK Aid, Minergy, GIZ, ESDC, and Chen, and other supporting partners as well as to our entrepreneurs as well. Despite of this process and support, we are facing challenges as well. The major challenges may be behavior and habitual change on the adoption of modern technology from our many entrepreneurs. Many new and modern technologies are coming up. However, about the relevant skills and knowledge to adopt these inventions are still lacking. Fuel prices are rising, hence it is almost requirement to explore alternative fuel which should have better energy value and can contribute to our NDC goals. Lack of sufficient financial strength and support, banking and insurance sectors still consider us as an informal sector that can help to transition of the brick sector. However, we are getting lots, lots of opportunities to develop the sectors Local, regional, and global support and collaboration have been increasing for the betterment of the sectors. Association with Ishimod and CCAC and other organizations brought us more clarity about modern technology and innovation in the sector and being recognized at global level, our presence on this COP is an example. Rising fuel prices and national commitments to net zero emissions have opened the door to exploring more about alternative fuel and process modification. We acknowledge the support from our 
partners and are already ready to work more than make the sector more sustainable and pollution free. Once again, I, I would like to thank all the participants over here from uh, as a brick entrepreneur representative from Federation of Nepal Brick Industries. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mahendra Ji. Uh, now I would like to request uh, Mr. Ashok Kumar Tiwari from India to present his remarks. Good afternoon <clears throat> to all who are present in this hall and those who have joined virtually. <clears throat> it is rightly said that the policy, mat policy matters and the policy is the main driving force for the any change. It is said. But honestly speaking, <clears throat> about this issue much has been discussed in the Hanoi, Vietnam. I am again not repeating all those issues. I am just here focusing the few new ones. So far as the policy is concerned, every government is making policy very honestly. They are trying to make the policy very honestly. No doubt about it. But actually there is a big gap in between this honesty and reality for whom the policy is made. That is why there is a very resistance in adopt, adoption of the new technology. And secondly, there is a policy gap as well. It is blamed that the sector is not responding in the cherished way. The fact is not like that. Because you see the lot of things about the sub electrical vehicles. What has been shown in the picture by Vidyaji that uh, the brick is being unloaded by the laborers in that way. Actually, it rarely happens anywhere because 75% of the bricks in the South Asian region is made in India. And the rest of 25% is in all other provinces, all other countries. In our country, we have seen that the maximum brick fields, they have adopted the electric vehicles for the loading of green bricks and, un uh, and uh, unloading of green bricks and loading. No government order has been passed for that. Even then, it has been done within a couple of years. Exactly in the same way, a lot of things like pugging, puck mails and extruders, they have been done without any call from the government. But why this thing is not happening? It is for two reasons. One, there is a policy gap. And secondly, there is a enough scope of intervention of the technology in this zigzag system. Because what the system needs and what we are practicing, there is a big gap. And I'm sure I can guarantee if this, this uh, capacity building is done, then we can reduce again 50% what is being done, what is the result available in zigzag terms by now. Because zigzag, maybe it is a new technology, but in many parts of India, we had adopted almost two decades back. For example, myself, I am I have this technology in, since 1998. Uh, I am practicing this. Almost 24 years has elapsed since I am practicing this technology. By that time, there was no guideline for the Pollution Control Board. But we have, at that time, driving force was the demand in the market because there was a major shift in the demand because the, uh, the, the lower quality of bricks and broken bricks were not in the demand. That's why we had adopted that technology by that time. Now, let us think that what are the main resources, since I have very limited time today and I have been asked by the Ravi to conclude within four minutes, I think uh, two and a half minutes has gone. And so the resources, what we use is the fuel that is, by this time we are using coal, agro waste and biomass, madam is here, they are the pioneer for making the uh, pilots and we are using that. And in many parts, we are 
we again we are and recently government of punjab has passed an order that uh, uh, every brick kiln will have to use at least 25 percent pellets in the coal and uh, in uh, our state in bengal in other states we are already uh, mixing the rice husk and uh, other things in that and the sawdust whatever is available and there is one thing in india that is unique within itself it needs to be promoted from the policy level that is the clay harvesting in maximum portion it is claimed that when we excavate the brick the almost the nature of land is changed but there is also a concept that when there is no change in the character of the land even then the clay is can be harvested that is in bangladesh that, that can could be done by by and large in the bangladesh and in bengal and in many part of we can uh, there is a difference in between dressing and excavating of the earth there are sedimented loaded uh, rivers in the india almost 72 rivers are there those who have full sediment load for example in bengal and my brick field which i am running and the same place it was run by the martin and burned 300 years back Without changing up any nature of land, the land, whatever silt we remove, again that silt is filled up and that system could be uh, understood and it should be made, a, there should be a policy for this sediment uh, collection, harvesting and above, apart from that, there are a lot of landlocked rivers in the country. For example, even in one state, uh, Uttar Pradesh, there are about 8,000 hectares of ponds which are landlord and those, uh, all those ponds have lost their the water retention capacity. And secondly, <clears throat> that is the progressive mine, what we call that is the progressive. And secondly, fly ash mix bris and topsoil. Now, why there is a big gap in the policy level? And what the government, actually, when we talk about, I am not especially talking about the India. Because I am talking about the South Asia, because pollution recognizes no boundary. Already we have EC mode and we have, and our Pakistan friends, they have understood that if the smoke, if the burning of uh, paddy husk is coming from the Punjab to the Delhi due to the low mixing height, low LMH, the same thing is coming from the Punjab, uh, from the Pakistan to this district, from India to Bangladesh. It recognizes no binary. So there should be some uh, connected, interconnected efforts, interconnected policies as well. That's why we have formed one organization known as FAPCA. In all the almost all the South Asian countries, particularly in India, there is an absence of nodal ministry. Main deadlock is a big policy gap that breaks the transformation mission and slow down the motivational factor. And the second thing is. The biggest problem I had mentioned that whenever when there, there was a discussion about the roadmap, I had asked one question from which point we have to start the change and to which point we have to go in between is the planning. And we ha yet we have what will be the first start starting point for the brick sector that is the scientific size of the bricks. There is no scientific size of the bricks. There is no technical specification in the practice. How may, how, however, it is on the document. But no one practices this. Had there been a very scientific size, I can assure you in almost all the... Uh, I was discussing with Nepal and Pakistan. What is the length of the brick? Is the simply half of the length is width of the bricks. This is very much unscientific because at least... 30% of mortar, that is again a natural ingredient that is being lost. And I had mentioned this point. Secondly, build the size of bricks should be guided by the building bylaws. Or the building bylaws should be amended for the size of bricks. There is a labor existing policies. There should be some uh, labor policies. However, in India, we, have, we are going to have a labor code bill very shortly, which is very much scientific. And secondly, so far as the social issues are concerned in India, in fact, uh, Pradhan Mantri, a lot of uh, Prime Minister policies for the welfare of the society, and we are, we are uh, adopting that. And we are also 
uh, promoting that. And uh, in India, being the president of the Federation, I am also in, always in the negotiation with the authorities to bridge this policy gap. And uh, I have already told what are the technological. So again, my mind is tossing upon the Rabi's alert program always he, he has knocked me sir you must not cross five minutes already i have violated even then coming to the last point that is the solution in india <clears throat> any road or any transformation energy resource will go through the uniform scientific size for the clay, for clay bricks so there the first thing is solution is that there should be a scientific size that will be our starting point there should be either a nodal ministry or any ministry responsible for the uh, brick sector. I can just very shortly quote only two examples. Brick kilns are the third largest coal consumer in the country after thermal power and steel plant. You see, for the coal consumption, making the policy for the coal consumption, there is a power ministry. They deal with that. There are the steel ministry, industry minister, big industry, they deal with that. But where is the ministry that deals with the brick sector, which is the third largest consumer? Why not? There must be a ministry, nodal ministry, a responsible ministry, who should be accountable for that. Only then this could be done. And secondly, capacity building policy. There should be a capacity building policy at national level and some reward system as well. Because all those brick makers, those who have changed their technology without any financial help from any government. I have heard that Pakistan government has most probably given something. But in India, where the 75% bricks are produced, no government help. Apart from that, in green building, brick, uh, green building certification, if any building has got the green certification, they are getting 15% FAR and 25% capital subsidy on the investment for the cleaner technology then why not for the big fields if those those who are adopting the cleaner technology those who are meeting the certain norms you set the norms that you have to meet it and you set the norms emission norms everything you set that and we will meet that if we are meeting to that you check it then you must um, have some reward system for us to promote the product or to promote the um, uh, the uh, brick sector and these are solutions. I have. I think uh, I have taken 35% uh, time which was allotted to me. More 35%. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Tiwariji. Since we are uh, running out of time, I would like to request colleagues to be precise with the timing. And uh, now I'd like to request uh, Mr. Meher Abdul Haq from Pakistan, but requesting to be short. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, namaste, and good afternoon, everybody. I rest assured, Mr. Abi, I will take no more time, extra time. All the time is already taken my senior, Mr. Ashok Kumar Tiwari, President of India. Okay. Actually, uh, I'm first of all, I'm Pakistani. I'm the senior vice chairman of Brickland Association Pakistan. I would just want to share some only three things with you first how did we start in pakistan with zigzag before 2017 there was no concept and idea in pakistan about zigzag and any other technology how can we save our environment how can save we our fuel and energy and 2017 february mr vidya pradhan with his team with her team visited Pakistan and had a meeting with the Ministry of Climate Change and with Brick Kilan Association Pakistan. There we committed. Okay, we'll visit Nepal with, by, by our own self, with our own expenses. We visited Nepal and uh, we were really surprised how they were working. We went back to Pakistan and take the, took the initiative and we made a first brick kiln zigzag in Pakistan in 2017. As my already 
Ms. Vidya Pradhan has very comprehensive briefing on brick kiln sector, especially for Pakistan. Uh, now, uh, there's about 20,000 brick kiln in Pakistan and uh, almost in Punjab. Infrastructure and uh, blower has been installed all, all over the Punjab. And now we are struggling in KPK, Balochistan and uh, in Sindh. Uh, hopefully, inshallah, within coming days with the support of EC mode and with uh, I would also like to thank FNBI, Nepal Federation, they helped us a lot. This is the story of Pakistan brick kiln sector and uh, the challenges are the same in all the region. We are facing the coal crisis and uh, we are lacking the technical support, especially the skilled labor. And uh, now the opportunities are very much bright. Uh, on this forum, uh, I would request uh, to all the participants, please support our goal because Pakistan is the one of the countries in the world which is facing a big disaster in the recent flood. You know, Pakistan has a very small portion in global warming, but paying a very big cost. That's why actually the 12 countries has a very big portion in polluting the air, but now uh, it's a need of the time. I will request this forum, please help the developing countries to promote this kind of project. And uh, I think so a lot of things to discuss here, but short of time. Thank you very much. I'm grateful to EC mode again and all the participants. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mayor Sahib. Now we will go to Mr. Asadur Rahman Khan, who is online with us. Uh, he couldn't make to come here. If colleague can screen it here. We would like to have a brief remark from him. On, he is the representative of the Bricklin Association in Bangladesh. Is hello, I am Asadur Rahman Khan, General Secretary of Bangladesh Brick Manufacturing Owners Association. Hello, you are hearing. Hello. Yes, Mr. Asadur, we can hear you. Okay. Respected government delegates, distinguished, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to join an event of National Center for Integrated Mountain Development, ECMOD, Sharm Ishaik COP27, Egypt. Reducing emission from the informal sector, big planes in South Asia. This title includes me, my association, country, and global. Simon has been worked for big field sector to reduce black carbon and emission of carbon dioxide. Since 2014, Simon has been connected with us regarding this and continues to support Bangladesh Brick Manufacturing Owners Association. Bangladesh is a developer, developing country having 160 million people in a small area of land. Clay bricks are the most important building materials in Bangladesh. Bricks are used in housing and road construction. Total brick production estimated 24 billion annually. Over 8,000 brick fields are operating in Bangladesh. Last few years, 98% big fields are operating in zigzag clean technology due to government's law. There are also other modern technology operating like tunnel and hybrid open clean. Zigzag clean is now environmental friendly and clean technology. South Asia produce brick, clay, brick in this technology. 
Recently, Dhaka University Chemistry Department published a journal in 2020 where we found bricklin is is responsible for pollution 10 percent pollution source has been changed in bangladesh this happens because of the changing the technology bangladesh is a country of a large population bangladesh is a country of a large population food security first due to this uh, due, due to this, collecting the soil from the agricultural land is banned. Collecting soil is now main problem for the brick field. I would like to thank Isimur for organizing regional cooperation to develop the brick sector in Asia. Asia countries, Asian countries, brick leaf owners association. Convent for the Federation of South Asian Brickley Association, FEPTA, to extend the FEPTA plans, exchange of knowledge, technologies, and common interest. On behalf of Bangladesh Brick Manufacturing Owners Association, I appreciate and wish that this event was for government and policymakers to consider the solution of brick sector. My thanks to Isimu for arranging such an event in Sharm in Sheikh, COP27, Egypt. Hope COP27 UNFCC program reaches its goal. I feel very sorry for myself that I could not physically attend this event. I would only call this as my bad luck that I can I couldn't visit a beautiful country like Egypt. That's all for me. Thanks, my friends. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Asadur Rahman Khan, sir. Uh, now, keeping the progress in this sector in mind and the challenges pointed out by the industrialists, uh, we will go to second round of our remarks by the government representatives. They are covering mainly the current policies in place in this sector and what is the way forward for this sector. So I would like to request Mr. Syed Nazmul Hassan, Director of Department of Environment from Bangladesh, for his remark. Hello. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the time on rain, I will not go uh, in the L. Oh, in the L, I will uh, uh, like to uh, hear my uh, knowledge that uh, what is our government policy we are in the uh, sector. Uh, only in my only has been on that uh, actually we have uh, transformed from FTA to GTA in 2015 and at present already around uh, 85 to 90 percent pre-kill in, in GTA technology. So, basically, recently our government has taken in the to uh, control the pardon free. That way, in 2019, government has uh, used a uh, circular where it has been made on there by 2025. All government on, on activities will be done by non bond free uh, in by by field wide. So, and also, you know that government is now promoting the, the only tunnel and hybrid hopman in in the of yet. Yeah. Why government is now going in that way? Because only my only has been on the, uh, in our country, officially, we have uh, 8,000 number of brick hill, 
Pag araw ko yun, more than 10,000. And the pre-kill, they use uh, around 1.5 billion ton of soil. And in early, 95% pre-kill, they use the uh, aerial cell of soil. So each and every year, we are losing the thousands of hectares of our oil line. But that's why our uh, Honorable Prime Minister has in, uh, even uh, in the last one to convert from burning brick to non burning brick for save our fertile land because we have a uh, land in RPE. That is number one. And number two, uh, though you know that uh, we are saying that it is an improved technology, but new lack of maintenance uh, in the pre owner or pre they never try to maintain properly maintain the pre in that way our air pollution is increasing day by day this is another another issue so at present our government policy is like that in the panel and hybrid is an improved technology and it run around the year but that way, many of industries have declared it as a industry. And also, Hopman is promoting the tunnel and uh, hybrid Hopman because one tunnel industry is for, uh, equal to more than 50 GTA in uh, Britain. So, if we can convert it to, from GTA to Martial or hybrid Hopman, so our planning is that it is uh, not more than 500. Only 500 tunnel or hybrid hopman and uh, meet up our demand. As well as non bond breed, that means uh, block breed we are promoting. And at present, we, we have uh, 209 block industry. And all the hopman is now trying to promote to increase the number of uh, non bond breed industry like block block. But this is our hopman policy, Mr. Ravi. So I will not go in the L already I have been on. I think I am win winning that time. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Syed Nazmal Hassan. Uh, now we will go to the presentation from India. We have uh, Jatender Kaur Arora, Executive Director, Punjab State Council for Science and Technology, for his remarks. Very happy to be here. Uh, there's a small presentation, Rabbi. If somebody can, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. How does it move forward? So that's what India is targeting at being. Uh, net zero by 2070 and i would say brick kiln sector has a major potential to contribute towards that just a second how is it not working yeah oh i think that will be nicer yeah so if somebody can operate the slides for me, yeah, that will be nice. Uh, so I think uh, taking you further, this is only a small presentation. I thought uh, uh, this session is particularly to talk about what are the policy initiatives happening and what is it that we plan to do in future. Uh, I'm just giving you a historical perspective and where we are standing today. In 96, uh, India came up with the first emission standards. It's not moving. The next one, maybe let's go to the next one. Yeah, here. Uh, so if you see, uh, the first emission standards for brick came in India in 1996. And that was 750 milligrams per normal metric cube. At that point of time, we used to have the moving chimney kilns. And that's where then uh, the directive came and the technology came for shifting to 
fixed chimney brickillance. And I have uh, uh, the organization that I head in Punjab is uh, the think tank of Department of Science and Technology, Science, Technology and Environment Government of Punjab, as well as the state level node of Department of Science and Technology Government of India. So all these te technological interventions as well as the policy interventions that happened over the period of time, uh, we have been fortunate to actually deliver those on ground, to conceptualize those as well as deliver those. So having talked about 96, then 2012, 2013, we carried out a study for uh, Ministry of Environment and Forest Government of India. It was a pan-India study based on which we came up with these standards, the new emission standards, uh, which then Government of India issued in 2022, this year only in February. The, by having done that, the zigzag technology then came into force. And uh, I think by having practiced these technological interventions, already almost about 80% emission reduction has happened in the brickland sector. And uh, Shokji, I totally agree with you. It depends on how are the operate, operational practices. You know, that's what will actually bring the emission norms, what the government of India is targeting at. You know? And uh, further on, what is the future that we are looking at? I'll come to the vision that uh, you know I would like to suggest. Uh, let's go to the next slide. If somebody is operating the slides for me. Uh, so still the brickillon sector is, uh, you know, being said to contribute maximum towards the black carbon. So what is it more that we can do? Let's go to the next one. Uh, so I am sharing some of the best practices from Punjab. Uh, my predecessors, uh, you know, Vidya said uh, about the biomass pellets, Ashokji, you also mentioned. Uh, so we came up, that's the approach actually we follow. So that's how the trickling effect, the replicative effect is very strong. What we try to do, we set up, say, a few demonstration units. Of course, mobilizing funding from various sources in government of India and the state government. And once the demonstration units are in place, then it kind of inculcates a confidence in industry. And then the adaption is very uh, quick. That's what we did in case of zigzag also. We had set up two demo units. Based on that, now we have close to 2,000 brick kilns and almost every other brick kiln in Punjab has now uh, converted to zigzag technology. And uh, simultaneously, uh, you know, we came up with a new intervention in the rural areas. For example, there's a challenge of continuous supply of electricity. So we came up with a hybrid brick kiln, which can operate with or without electricity and uh, have also filed patent for that. Uh, let's go to the next. And this is another very uh, meaningful intervention uh, that I would like to share. Bindiya mentioned about the social aspect. I would say it was a very, very satisfying experience. During peak COVID, all of you are aware, uh, you know, there was a huge, huge challenge that the industry faced about the labor migration. You know? And the, the labor that uh, they had to sustain with, you know, had to be trained. You know? So during that period, we took up that challenge, started with the province of Punjab in India, online uh, training, the Brickillon owners organized and brought their whatever manpower they were left with brought them on board for capacity building. And then government of India wanted us to do for the other states also. So we covered a large number of uh, brickland workers across six, seven states in uh, India. Let's go to the next one. Yeah. And yeah, so this is uh, another, I would say a path breaking endeavor rightly said it's, I would say a pioneering in initiative, which uh, serves the twin cause in, uh, Punjab province of India, we have, uh, uh, it's the bread basket of the country. Every year we produced about 17 million tons of paddy straw and paddy straw burning is a major challenge. And uh, 
we tried various combination permutations and have gained success with 20% replacement of coal with fuel and happy to share that just before coming uh, i have got this notification issued it's now mandatorily all the brickillons in punjab uh, will be replacing 20% coal with the paddy straw pellets and in times to come i see they'll go on to even much more uh, percentage i foresee say 50% because the economics are in place you know it's uh, if you make money uh, the tech intervention will work so that's what is happening in this case it's a cheaper raw material everybody touched upon the rising rising prices of uh, coal so it's a win win situation it reduces the emissions as well as uh, takes care of the challenge of paddy straw as well as it uh, leads to economic benefits if i give you uh, uh, quickly you uh, know uh, perhaps the next slide covers let's go to the next one yeah so here if you look at the economics and in terms of the statistics if i share with you um, for every billion of uh, let's go here. yeah every billion uh, you know uh, uh, bricks produced the manufacturer saves to the tune of 2.4 million usd and if you look at the emission savings it's to the tune of 44000 ton carbon dioxide per annum you know let's go to the next one mm -hmm. uh so so that's what is happening as of now and also having said that uh, since i'm talking uh, of the interventions both happening at the technology level as well as at the policy level uh, there is a commission for air quality monitoring specifically set up by government of india which is also which is giving policy directives based on the carrying capacity of the region for example in uh, national capital region already all the industries have been given directive to shift to either pipe natural gas or uh the biomass based fuels which means that the pioneering initiative that punjab has taken uh by mandatorily uh, you know enforcing 24 20% replacement we foresee lots of palletization units coming up in punjab in the times to come which will cater not only to the pallet requirement in punjab but also in ncr in the national capital region uh, of india and uh, obviously which means lot of employment generation as well and uh, coming uh, to the future uh, you know planning the, the pointers that i would like to share one isimod is already thinking of coming up with a vision document i think it's a very very welcoming step uh, two three thoughts on this one let's keep the regional diversities in mind when we frame that because it depends on uh, you know uh, region to region the resource available varies uh, so i think that's one thing that needs to be kept in mind and also for example uh, um, when i say resource say within india itself again within punjab say we have five thermal power plants which are operational and uh, for example jammu and kashmir doesn't have any power plant so Uh, coming up with a directive that if fly ash has to fly ash based bricks and in times to, uh, you know if that kind of directive has to come then looking at this has to be looked into whether this resource is available in a particular state in a particular region and so on and so forth and also uh, a lot of future that i see for resource efficient bricks and uh, uh, you know shift towards biomass and png in short term maybe a few demo units working on png maybe a few units which are mechanized say uh, you know pneumatic feeding so these are the new ideas that we which we would like to see uh, being first demonstrated in the form of model units and I, as i said once the industry gains confidence uh, you know then sky is the limit and uh, i think as i said in the beginning uh, this sector is a very very potential sector which can contribute towards net zero ambitions of country of the globe i think thank you once uh, once again for holding a specific focus section on brick sector and we look forward to continued dialogue on this thank you yeah
Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Arora. Now we would like to, I would like to request uh, Ms. Juti Joshi, Joint Secretary, Ministry of Industry and Commerce, uh, Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Trade, Nepal, uh, for her remark. Thank you. Distinguished guests, virtual representative, members from SKS, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to participate in this important event. And uh, I think I am the second last or last speaker. And thank you for your patience. <laughs> and you people are here from morning 10. So I would like to um, make my speech very short. So uh, owing and uh, agreeing on the all participants and all speakers things, I would like to say just something. As from Indian uh, parties, you just mentioned about the uh, size and other things. So we can have uh, that things from the uh, IS standards as well as from Nepal standards. So we have in place many things. We have to just need coordination and collaboration with the other sectors so that we can go further. Uh, uh, so let's come to the point. We have a huge amount of carbon black as well as the hazardous pollutant uh, from these sectors like SO2, carbon dioxide, and excessive energy is required to produce the, uh, this uh, brick. So we can uh, do the product shift uh, to have a, uh, with the better technology. Uh, so we need to reform our technology to green one and carbon trapping technology wherever it is possible. Uh, so it's my view and our government's view that uh, it's better to stop at the source than the after after management is the very difficult things. Uh, so for the strategy and policy things, our dear secretary already told about on that. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, though the brick sector in Nepal is a very small sector, but it is a cross cutting issue. And we are here in the learning process. Yeah, we can learn best things from the India and our partner countries. Uh, though we are being a developing, developing and a small country, we cannot invest a lot in the research and uh, development. So we can learn from each other. As uh, Pakistan people says, uh, they learn from uh, Nepal. So we will happy to learn from India. India. So at last, I would like to say uh, in this sector, informal sectors like women and children working in those sectors are very vulnerable. So we have to think about them also uh, in, uh, in this area. So we need to product shift uh, like uh, with the, as Madam said, uh, for the, that using the fly ash. So we have to be shifted on from OPC to PPC product with the AAC, light product, brick ones, as we are very vulnerable to the earthquake, so we can have a light brick, uh, bricks wherever it can be used. Uh, so uh, thank you all. Thank you, EC Mode, to providing uh, this platform uh, to us. Thank you all for your patience to listen us uh, at last. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Juti. So now we had a I think a range of discussion which covers all part of the brick sector or whatever we have, we did till now and our vision for the future. Uh, now we will go to um, Katlina, program manager CCEC for her remarks and listening from her on the way forward. Katlina, if you are there, you can come in, please. Good afternoon, Gabi, and good afternoon to distinguished guests that are sitting there. I'm sorry to not be able to attend, but I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, um, we, we, we cannot hear you properly, Katna. It's not loud enough. Hello, can you hear me? I, I see that my colleagues that are here with me virtually, you can hear me, but can you hear me there uh, for those of you that are in the chat? Hello, Robbie, can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Okay, excellent. 
Uh, thank you, Rabi. And once again, uh, thank you very much to EC Mode for organizing this event. And the Climate and Clean Air Coalition is very pleased to support the BRICS sector. And uh, also, uh, thank you very much to the distinguished guests and speakers, uh, representatives from the BRICS associations in South Asia, as well as the representatives from the government. I'm very pleased to be able to participate in today's event. Uh, I would also like to note that uh, the grid sector has been instrumental in, in helping the Climate and Clean Air Coalition achieve its mission, which is to put the pathway to uh, put the world on a pathway that rapidly reduces warming in the near term and maximizes development, health, environmental, and food security benefits. And as Martina mentioned earlier, we are doing this by supporting and catalyzing fast, fast action to reduce short lived climate pollutants, of which carbon, uh, black carbon is, is um, also an SLCP. And the brick sector, as we know, is the black carbon rich source sector. I would like to note that the Climate and Clean Air Coalition over the past years has been, over the past eight years, has been the only global initiative that has, has been supporting uh, efforts to improve the efficiency of the brick sector. And when launching the CCAC's 2030 strategy at the end of 2021, the BRIC sector was again included as one of the important uh, sectors to tackle. But as the closing remarks, I would just like to uh, indicate that we've heard obviously about the opportunities and about the achievements that we've managed to, uh, to see over our work in the past eight years. And we see that, however, there are still challenges uh, to overcome, such as policy and regulatory gaps. We have technological barriers as well as the investment financial barriers. And there are also other cost cutting concerns to look at, such as soil health and, and uh, loss of fertile agricultural land that is related to the sector. However, I'd like to uh, highlight as well the high level traction that Vivia referred to, and as well the, the environment and development um, discourse that has been evolving over the years and across uh, the region in South Asia. Uh, we just heard about net zero commitments. Uh, there's also evolving changes associated to sustainable building and construction. And uh, these, I, I think, are important to highlight as opportunities to see how we can address these working together with the countries and the BRICS Association uh, moving forward. I'd like to note that the Climate and Clean Air Coalition supports global advocacy, catalyzing actions and, and funding, as well as providing support to ODA eligible countries. And Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, and Nepal are all CCAC partner countries, represented, represented by the same ministries that are sitting today in the room. And this offers an opportunity uh, because the CCAC recently launched a call for expressions of interest to its CCAC countries, requesting that they submit an overview of what are their needs and priorities. And this is therefore an opportunity for these countries in South Asia to submit a expression of interest on how they would like to expand uh, efforts or planning efforts to address emissions from the tech sector. We've already seen that countries uh, like Pakistan have included uh, measures within their national determined contribution to uh, convert homes to zigzag homes in Pakistan. And we've all, all we've seen evolving of policies in other countries as well, uh, including emission regulations. So therefore, the CTSC is very interested in learning more uh, from South Asia to understand what are other priorities that can help develop or move the needle on the more effective regulatory systems and that can support the deployment of measures uh, at, at a larger scale. We also would like to understand what are particular, so that is at the planning level, but we also want to understand at the grid sector level, what are your mitigation needs and what what further support can we provide uh, to support, for instance, assessing um, sustainable uh, bricks as a sustainable construction material to help countries incorporate bricks as part of these uh, new movements towards sustainable bricks and construction? These are just examples I'd like to provide. And as a third window of opportunity, we also offer short term targeted expert assistance that can support countries from 30,000 to 50K 
And here we uh, would love to learn more, maybe there are possibility assessments that countries have in mind or uh, specific guidance material or, or tools that need to be developed that can support the enabling framework that, that, uh, that can support more efficient brick production. So these are the opportunities and I hope that the countries uh, sitting there today um, will reach out. We would be happy to put you uh, in contact or provide you with the focal points for Nepal, Pakistan, Bangladesh and India uh, to see how we can further this, uh, this work in the region. So thank you very much and once again thank you for Isumon and its valuable contribution to this work and for the Cryosphere Pavilion for allowing us uh, to, to hold this event. Thank you once again. Thank you very much, Catalina, for joining us online today. And uh, we have a screening of a document in our agenda, but uh, due to the constraint of time in our next session, we will have it. Please remain with us here for a few documentaries that we will have. Uh, with this, I would like to thank everyone, our colleagues, as well as uh, representative of governments from all countries and also industrialists and also colleagues that who, who joined us online today. So this is the end of our session. We will have a group photo. Uh, if you guys all come in the stage, you will have a group photo and with that group photo we will end the session. Also, I would like to request all colleagues who are in the online platform to turn on their camera, please.